science, engineering, technology. That's what the Linda Hall Library is all about. Located in the heart of Kansas City, the Linda Hall Library is one of the largest and best science libraries in the world. The library is named after Linda Hall. She grew up in Virginia around the time of the Civil War. She eventually moved to Kansas City and got married. Her husband, Herbert, did very well in business. He helped to start and run a company that exported grains, like wheat and corn, to other countries. The Halls had a big, beautiful home. It was surrounded by acres of land that they eventually turned into an arboretum with many kinds of trees and other plants. The Halls did not have any children, so as they got older, they thought a lot about what should happen to their property when they passed away. They decided to leave their home, their land, and six million dollars to be used to create a library. The Halls did not say what kind of library it would be. After thinking about all the possibilities, the library's first leaders decided that it would be a library about science and technology. The library began building its collection of books, and it opened in 1946. Since then, people from Kansas City and all over the country and the world have used the Linda Hall Library's collections to investigate and learn more about science. I visited the library and talked to its president, Lisa Brower, to find out more. What makes the Linda Hall Library so special? Well, what I think makes it special is the fact that aside from being a wonderful library devoted specifically to science and technology, it was an act of generosity on the part of two people who were so civic-minded that they wanted to give a portion of their personal wealth to create a library for the people of Kansas City, Missouri. And I think that's really special. One of my favorite places in the library is the Cosmology Theater. It shows educational presentations about astronomy and space-based earth science, with lots of spectacular images from space telescopes. The library also has special exhibitions, with a new one starting every few months. When I visited, the special exhibition was about the science of natural disasters, like tornadoes and earthquakes. Many of the library's most precious treasures are in its History of Science collection. Some of the books in this collection are 300, 400, or even 500 years old, Benjamin Gross is the library's vice president for research and scholarship. What are some of your favorite books in the collection? That's a really tricky question because we have so many beautiful books here. We have about 10,000 books in the History of Science collection, just the rare book part of the library. And picking one is really, really difficult. Uh, we have books by any famous scientist you've probably heard of, Galileo, Newton, Einstein, uh, Copernicus. Uh, but we also have books by authors you might not have heard of. One of my favorites, for example, in fact it was the first book that we acquired when I joined the staff of the library, is a book of microscopy by a German uh, natural philosopher named Martin Lederbüller. Martin Frobenius Lederbüller. And it's this beautiful, hand-illustrated uh, book teaching people how to use a microscope and look at different things in the world. And if you'd like, I'd be glad to show it to you. These illustrations are just marvelous. Here's a, a butterfly and then the scales off of its wings. This is Galileo's starry messenger, and it describes what he first saw when he looked at the night sky through a telescope. The library's copy of the book even includes a handwritten correction that experts believe was made by Galileo himself. This is one of the books created after Charles Darwin returned from his voyage to the Galapagos Islands. It covers the many kinds of birds he found during the expedition. The illustrations in many of the oldest books are beautiful. The colors are gorgeous, and just imagine the work that went into creating these drawings. These books are works of art, as well as science. This book is my personal favorite. It is the first volume of Jan Blau's Atlas Major. It was published in 1662, and it captured what was known about the geography of the world at the time. This part of the book is about the Grand Observatory, called Uraniborg, that was built on an island by the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe. And it was this beautiful and elaborate uh, space. You can see the gardens out here. And this is the main um, observatory. What's your favorite thing about working at the library? My favorite thing is that I get to learn something new every day. I don't know a lot about science myself, but every day I learn something more about science. And what I really love is having the opportunity to tell other people who may not know a lot about science either why they need to know about science and technology in today's world. The Linda Hall Library, a place where you can discover a lot about the past, the present, and the future of science.